August 24th, there was a proposal that was released uh, in a press conference, which was surprising to many of us since we hadn't seen or heard of a finalized plan, and uh, it included some proposals that were uh, rather alarming to many of us. The greatest pause we had is that when we reviewed it, it's still leaving four to eight feet of uh, lethal swift water on Lower Main Street and four to six on Upper Main Street around the brewery. And that's not safe for anyone. But the key problem here is that you have a large uh, area that the rain funnels down into and at the very bottom of the funnel there's a very small neck and all the water has to get out in front of the bridge behind me. And as a result you have eight, 10, 12 feet of water right at the very bottom that goes all the way back up the relatively flat spot up towards Kaplan's and then, and then further up the hill. So the big challenge is to get that water out of the bottom of the city and out to where it's safer. As an example, this car here would probably, the driver would lose control if the water were only about this deep, that's less than a foot, and the car would actually start to float once the water is maybe this high, 18 inches high. The result of that is that people lose control of their cars, the cars get swept downstream, in this city, the cars get swept into deeper and deeper water, and that's what the real danger is of swift water in Ellicott City. You may remember that scary video of the human chain rescue on Main Street in the first flood. That was taken right here. The car was about was being swept down the road by about 18 inches of flood water. The first rescuer that went after the person in the car was knocked off their feet by that flood and was very lucky to be able to catch on to a pole further down the street and get himself out. I have a kind of an interesting career. I was a volunteer firefighter and paramedic for some time in New York. I've spent a lot of time in uh, Minnesota solving challenging problems in the technology domain for a uh, large company. Um, and this kind of problem is the kind of thing that lots of people react to very uh, viscerally. They have a lot of emotion, uh, there's a lot of challenges that have to be dealt with, and, we, and my job usually in these kinds of situations is to get the emotion out of the equation as much as possible and focus on what the data are telling us. So the current plan is to, besides having a very large channel that comes down alongside where these buildings will be, is to put two 10-foot diameter pipes that start from under these buildings, under the Phoenix, go across underneath the street, underneath the turntable, under, under the, the active, active rail, rail line, line and, and end, end up, up above, above the Pataxico River so that the water can flow through them. That's a very challenging engineering project. It's very expensive. It's unsure whether that can actually be done. And even if it is done, those culverts still leave between three, four, six feet of water on Lower Main with all of the problems involving floating cars and uh, drifting cars that I've talked about before. So you may recall that scary video taken of Fort Collins from across the street that showed flood water starting at about this high, which is about two feet above the sidewalk. Eventually it got up to about this high, which is four feet above the sidewalk. Here I am at six feet. So the county plan still leaves flood water between four and six feet at Lower Main. So even after they remove the buildings, we still have the swift water danger. You know, we're trying to figure out why there's a push to remove buildings first rather than remove flood water first. When we started reviewing everything and, and asking the questions, so we came across uh, a study in the hydrological presentation uh, that uh, McCormick Taylor did, and that included a twin bore tunnel option which shows no water on Main Street upon completion. I'm a member of the Ellicott City Rotary Club and we have, uh, since the 2016 storm, we have had a, a line of speakers that uh, represent all of the players in this flood event. I uh, graduated from UMBC with a BA that focused on geographic information systems which had a lot of uh, work with hydrology, geomorphology, 
and uh, subjects of that nature. The McCormick and Taylor flood analysis of 2016 uh, modeled the flooding on Main Street from West End to Lower Main Street. Um, it examined all of the retention of uh, water retention capabilities within our watershed and determined that even deploying all water retention, uh, there's still a surplus of flood water on Lower Main Street and they proposed a two tunnel solution, one of which um, is on north of Main Street and one is south of Main Street. We are here at the confluence of the Tiber and Newcut branch where one of the proposed entrances is. Well, the proposals from the county um, suggested that the construction cost was $80 million and up. I've heard as high as $120 million. Um, I felt that um, that just didn't seem to add up. I uh, got in contact with several foreign foreign contractors, contractors around, around the country, country from, from Nevada, Nevada to Chicago. Chicago. Uh, uh, talked to them about actual linear, linear foot construction, construction costs. costs. I found, I found that uh, tunnel boring ranges from 13,000 a linear, linear foot, foot to 19,000 a linear foot. So with that information, I called a local tunnel contractor and asked them if they had interest in talking to me about this project and just looking at uh, global uh, budget numbers on what this might actually cost. Um, I actually met with them and they said not only do they uh, are, have interest in the project, but they've already done the background work on it. Uh, McCormick and Taylor had contacted them uh, during the development of their study for ballpark pricing. So we uh, reached out to an engineer, a local engineer, to determine and to evaluate the flow rates of the Tiber and the Newcut branch. And we found that the combined flow rate is 7,000 cubic feet per second where these two rivers come together. And the lower Tiber is able to handle within its banks 2,100 cubic feet per second. So the surplus, the difference between those two numbers is what flows onto Main Street, which is in the neighborhood of 5,000 cubic feet per second. So um, based on that information, an analysis was done on what it would take to divert 5,000 cubic feet per second of flood water from this point, the confluence of these two rivers, to the Patapsco South of Maine, and it was determined that two 16-foot diameter tunnels, or one 24-foot diameter tunnel, would uh, channel and divert 100% of the flood water off of Main Street and to the Patapsco. This tunneling contractor obviously has interest in the project. They've done the preliminary math on the project. Um, they were willing to share with me their worksheets for the two, uh, being very clear that this, this is not a proposal and that this is their direct cost. So the direct cost of the South Tunnel, which leads from the Newcut Branch to the Patapsco, is $8.5 million. And the direct cost for the North Tunnel that goes from the parking lot behind Ellicott Mills Brewery to the Patapsco is $12 million. So we established that uh, this is nowhere close to 80 to 120 million dollars and that it is absolutely a viable alternative to tearing our town down. So I watched the testimony at the legislative meeting. I have seen testimony in other settings and the urgency, the emotion, the pain, the hurt, the post-traumatic stress, it's real. And getting this project started as quickly as humanly possible is critical to the success of Ellicott City. Um, this uh, tunnel project on the south side has a duration, according to the tunnel contractor, of 28 months. So in the ground working for a little more than two years. Um, it's, it, it's theoretical that we could have um, a, a design phase of maybe a year. So we really could, in three, three and a half years, be flood-proof on Lower Main, Main Street. Tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, are not new. They were developed in the 1860s. They're used all over the world, every day of the week. They go through everything, even granite.
business people have a right to be terrified and worried about their businesses. With the fact that Main Street has the potential to continue flooding, that's not good for customers coming. And if customers don't come, you don't have sales. If you don't have sales, you don't have viable businesses. It all comes hand in hand. So first and foremost, we have to make Main Street safe. If you think this alternative plan is better, faster, and economically favorable, reach out to your council rep at councilmail at howardcountymd.gov.